Right, hi there, this is exercise 1A, the video lesson we started last time and I want to continue now um, because we still had a couple of examples to go, so uh, might as well um, crack on with this and uh, see what we can do. Now, the last example we saw was a recurrence relation and I want to take this a step further and look at a second um, recurrence relation. This is a bit more complicated and you'll notice why it's more complicated. It's because... Um, the next term, un plus 2, it says, relies on the previous two terms. And the subtle difference is now that we need to show, and we can still do it by proof by induction, but you need to show that the formula works for the two starting values of n. So, for instance, then, when I'm doing step 1, and I don't think in year 12 we saw this particularly, um, well, yeah, from the year 12 textbook, um, but w with n equal to 1, you basically can look at the right-hand side of this formula. And you can say the right-hand side equals 2 to the 1 plus 3 to the 1, which is obviously 5. And, yep, that's 5. It's worked. And when n equals 2, the right-hand side of this formula equals 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is obviously 4 plus 9, which is 13. You go, yep, that's worked. So we're quite happy with that. We can now really move on to step 2. And step 2 is a slight adjustment too, really. And we have to assume that the rule, the formula they've given us, that um, I'm, I'm going to write the formula works for um, n equal to k and n equal to k plus 1. So it's an it's additional rule that we've got to include there. So if you like, we can write that down as u to the k equals 2 to the k plus 3 to the k. And we also have to assume that uk plus 1 is 2 to the k plus 1 plus 3 to the k plus 1. And that's all because in our formula we've got u n plus 2. We've got to go one more than that. So our assumption now is that both of these work. We've shown it works for 2. Um, and the argument will still hold. I'll just delete some stuff off there so we can see it all. So now we do step three. And last time we did this very similarly, we, we basically went back to this formula and said, well, uk plus two is going to be five lots of uk plus one minus six uk. And obviously we've assumed something about uk plus one. We've assumed that that is two to the k plus one plus three to the k plus one. And then I've got to take away minus 6 lots of 2 to the k um, plus uh, 3 to the k. And that's me substituting in the uk plus 1 and the uk. And now let's see if I can play around with this. I've got 5 lots of 2 to the k plus 1. Now, if you think about it, 2 to the k plus 1. And of course, what do I want? Is sometimes we, we want to... You know, and I, I think I want to write, I want u to the k plus 2. I've got to get 2 to the k plus 2 out of this sometime, how, and plus 3 to the k plus 2. So let's just bear that in mind. I've got to get a k plus 2 out of this. Um, so I suppose the obvious thing to do here is to multiply out the brackets. I mean, one thing I notice is if it's 2 to the k plus 1, I'm thinking of that as 5 times by 2 times 2 to the k plus 5 times by 3 times 3 to the k. That's the k plus 1's dealt with. Minus 6 times 2 to the k plus, oh, sorry, minus 6 times 3 to the k. And I want to try to get all the 2 to the k's together, obviously. And um, 
I suppose I've got 10 here minus 6 here. So I suppose I want to write 4 times 2 to the k. And all of these I've got like 15 of them minus 6 of them. So that sounds to me to be plus 9. 15 minus 6, yeah, times 3 to the k. And just think about it. That sounds like 2 times 2 to the k. Don't know where that came from. Plus a 3 times 3 times 3 to the k. And that allows me to write it as 2 times 2 to the k plus 1. Plus 3 times 3 to the k plus 1. Um, is that right? Well, in fact, I, I can just don't write that at all. I get rid of this. And I say it's to the k plus 2. And I get rid of this one and say it's to the k plus 2. That's which, is, which, of course, is what I wanted. I, I wrote that before. And then I just need that uh, completion statement. And I suppose the only difference here is the completion statement would run something on the lines of um, the formula works for n equals 1 and n equals 2. And if it works for n equals k and it works for n equals k plus 1, then it also works for n equals k plus 2. Therefore, the formula works for all positive integers by mathematical induction. So something like that. So it's slightly different and because it's a slightly different question, I suppose. And the last one I've got for you is a matrix one. So this is the third type that we saw in, in the year 12 textbook. Um, first of all, it says m equals 3 naught 2 1. And it says show that m to the 4. And that was a show that. That gives me the answer, I suppose. I suppose I'd better do a, a bit of proper work. m squared would be, oops, that's a 2 times by itself, which is 3 naught to 2, 1. And that's 3 times 3 is 9, plus nothing. 3 naught, naught, that's naught. 2, 3 is a 6, plus 2 is 8. 2 naught, plus that's 1. So that's m squared. And the great thing about m to the 4 is it's m squared squared. So all I've got to do now is do 9 naught 8 1 times by 9 naught 8 1. What's that give me? Presumably what I've got over there, but 9 nines are 81. Yes, it does give me 81 up here. Nothing, nothing. 72 plus 8 is 80. Yes, this is working, isn't it? And um, yes, that's one there. So yes, it has done the job there. Hence they suggest a suitable form for m to the n. Well, not obvious. Um, the only thing I think here is 81 is such a nice number. It's like 3 to the 4. Ah, right, and this is m to the 4. So I'm wondering whether or not for part 2, m to the n would be, well, that was 3 to 4, so I'm going to say 3 to the n. And that one's underneath it is one less, so I'm going to say it's three to the n, but then take away a one. And naught and one seem fairly consistent. So that's my conjecture. That's what I would suggest would be a formula for m to the n. Now, if it's true, then it will work for. So I know then that m to the four. So this is going to be step one. This is my proof m to the 4 equals, and I've got it up there, 81, 18, or 1. And if I use my rule, um, it's 3 to the 4, 3 to the 4 minus 1, or 1. So yes, it's true. I mean, I've really just repeated what I already knew, but I've gone through the process. Step 2 is I've got to make an assumption. I'm going to write down that I assume that m to the k equals, and it's always a bit annoying having to rewrite it, but there you go. For all n belonging to the um, natural numbers. Or you, that's sometimes written as the positive integers, which is uh, positive integers is written z plus. Um, but you, know, you could even write it with positive integers. Now I need to just um, zap my annotations. So I shall do that now. 
And now I need to prove this step three. Now I've made an assumption already. So the great thing about M or matrices is to get M to the K plus one, you basically do M times M to the K. Um, and therefore it becomes um, now actually what needs to be does it really matter? No, I don't think it really matters. So I shall do three naught two one times by my m to the k. What was my m to the k now? It was three to the k and three to the k minus one naught one. So if I multiply these out, I get three times three to the k. Well that's obviously three to the k plus one, that's done the job. Three to the no times naught naught and that's definitely naught. I'm assuming that two times that will definitely be one. This corner bottom one here, which I'll be slightly careful with, this is two times three to the k plus looks like three to the k minus one. And I'm going to write this up here. This is equal obviously to three to the k plus one naught. Now I've got two three to the k and I've got another three to the k. So that's three times three to the k and it does say minus one oh this is working quite nicely and so three lots of three to the k can be written as um, this put this number these numbers in first and this is an extra three here so this is definitely three to the k plus one don't forget your minus one and this is where we write, this is the given result, etc, etc. And it's a fairly straightforward one. It hasn't got um, two different terms. Um, so that's worked out quite nicely. I, th I think that's OK. So we've done now four examples. The four examples we saw was we saw a differentiation one, which that worked OK. We saw two different types of recurrence relations. One was fairly straightforward. One had the um, the double terms the u1 and the u2 and we had a bit more to do um, but after that it was fine and then the last one matrices so we've got three different types um, i'm just going to have a quick look at the textbook um, as far as i know that's all you're going to be asked to do but if there's any strange ones just give me an email and um or come, come and see us and uh, we'll, we'll sort that out so hopefully um, that makes sense and we'll pull that quiz there so best luck